Hello, my friends. According to the Russian social media resources and reports from the front lines, from actual soldiers on the enemy side, and also let's call them independent journalists, but still they follow this Z patriotic style. So, according to their information, Ukraine is preparing the massive counterattack in the Bakhmut city. We concentrate our forces in a Chasov Yar. I don't know where they get the information from, but they say that we sent Leopard 2 tanks to the Chasov Yar. Just for you to understand, we already have received all of the 14 Leopard tanks that were promised to us by the Poland side. So, it's the good thing, but I don't really know where they are from the Russian side. They are in charge if you are and getting ready for the new attack. The attack is quite interesting if it will be because in that case we're gonna attack the Wagner forces which is the most capable force on the Russian side. It's the private army, it's not the Russian regular group but still they may capture some sort of the land and if we go to the timeline so we see that they moved actually to the city to the central part I would say not far away from the central part just few quartals away I would say and it's time maybe for Ukrainian forces to think about the possible evacuation from the Bakhmut city then we still have this main road because the rumors about the counterattack they are quite good but I don't have the confirmation from the Ukrainian side about the planning of the counterattack but I think no one would say that we are planning the counterattack however there were some of the rumors around one week ago that Ukraine concentrated some of the forces in Chasifyar, Konstantinovka then uh, Slavansk over here and or here in Siversk but again that information came mostly from the Russian resources and we have partial confirmation from our independent journalists as well but today we have the report from one of the commanders who is the chief of one of the military units in the Bahamut city that the situation deteriorates very rapidly and it could be the second Debaltseva. Debaltseva is over here my friends and Russians were able to encircle the city back in 2000 I think 14 and our forces went out from the city with heavy losses because the corridor to let them out was not agreed with the Russian side. So we lost many of the soldiers there. It happened as in Ilovaisk, then we also have lots of the losses. I hope and I believe that our forces will go from Bahmut successfully in case the situation will turn worse or we should go on a counterattack if the rumors from the Russian side would be confirmed. But definitely it could be the very risky mission to start the counter-attack from the chest of Yar. Obviously it's gonna be started from two of the directions. Once to encircle this area, the other one is over here and then attack the Bakhmut city that is already yeah, partially captured by the Russian forces. So I think it could be like that, but not really sure whether the Ukrainian army is getting ready for it. I know that we sent some of the elite forces in the area, but 14 Leopard 2 tanks are still not enough for the the massive counterattack. It could be, however, as in Kharkiv area last year, then the Russians were not expecting the massive counterattack from Ukrainian forces and it happened very rapidly. Not many forces, I would say, were used for this massive counterattack, but Russians were not expecting it. And I think Wagner's are also not expecting the Ukrainian counterattack and they are not building the defense lines over here because they're the attacking side. But if they face the counterattack, attack with overwhelmingly larger forces that the Ukrainian army still may present right now. Yes, we don't have the weaponry, but we still have lots of the soldiers in the Ukrainian army that outnumber the Wagner soldiers. So we may start the counterattack and with no defense lines prepare, Wagner may lose its positions. And certainly there is some sort of the deja vu I have right now because Last year, before the Kharkiv, all of the Russian military correspondents, they say that Ukraine is getting ready for the attack. Russian soldiers and commanders, they say that Ukraine is getting ready for the counterattack in the Kharkiv region, but Russian officials, they just didn't listen. And that is what we see again in the Russian social media. And I'm not opening you a secret about the case, I'm just sharing the information and my thoughts about the case. This information already exists, but on the Russian public sources. So clearly here they are panicking and it's a good sign. And those are the poor Russian soldiers that were delivered to the front lines in those livestock 
carriages. So Russian army has no respect towards their own soldiers, not organizing the normal wagons or carriages for the soldiers to be delivered as normal human beings. Yes, here we speak about privates, but also there are some of the rumors that Russian pilots of Suhoi Su-34 airplanes are complaining about their command and willing to fight even in Wagner just to run away from their own leadership. Well, actually, I hate those pilots because they use the aviation bombs against civilians in Ukrainian war, as well as cruise missiles and others, so they are not my friends or anything, they are my enemies. I don't know how those pilots sleep normally after they destroyed Mariupol and many civilian and residential buildings in Ukraine. There are some Russian-backed protests in Moldova and today border control even took some of the Wagner soldiers that were flying with the air transport to Chisinau. They wanted to take the part in those protests organizing them. Moldova could be potentially the next hotspot in this conflict, then the situation may evaluate not according to the good scenario. And there is the Transnistria, which is like a pain in the ass for both Ukraine and Moldova. And I think that it could be the proper time to resolve the issue with Transnistria and return the territories and people back to Moldova. And also it will show civilians in Moldova that Moldovan government is very strong and able to return the territories. Protests are not really significant if you compare to what is happening nowadays in Israel. Uh, there are just half a million of people on the streets. Uh, they're protesting against the current prime minister, I think. Well, I'm not really into that situation, but in this one, you can see not really a populated place out there. And this is one of the Wagner soldiers that was arrested today in Chisinau. Actually, he was deported back from the country he went from, and no one says what that country is, and even military identity card was found with him and some of the photos with his colleagues. The Russian aviation gliding bomb, yes, they also have uh, those bombs uh, that may glide for some sort of a distance. Well, it struck the north part of Donetsk city. Luckily, it didn't explode, but from the photos, we may see that it has some sort of the wings and attachable panel to the bomb. So really, it was the Russian gliding bomb like that. Someone did some sort of the art over here so this part is attached from the bottom and it may glide for some distance the russian side doesn't have lots of those bombs however still they may use them and here they bomb their own controlled territory and this is the answer for you who was bombing Donetsk for nine years. The United States Air Force sent the B-52 bomber, this time not near to Russia, but close to Iran, and probably they simulated the launch of the nuclear missiles on Iranian territory. They do it to show that the revenge is possible in case so one of those two countries would use the mass destruction weaponry. And the self-proclaimed president of Belarus, Lukashenko, attended Iran today with his official visit. Just one week ago he was in China, so probably his ambassador of the Russian peace to negotiate something, let's say, with allies of the Russian Federation. As for the China Communist Party elected the new defense minister, he is now Li Shanfu, who is under the Western sanctions because he communicated with the Russian side and provided some of the military equipment and data. But also he is responsible for purchasing the military fighter jets Suhoi Su-35 as well as anti-aircraft systems S-400 from Russia. So there is some sort of the exchange. And again the reminder why the counterattack from the Ukrainian side is not happening right now. It's better to hold Bahmut as long as possible to wait the better weather and then start the counterattack because here it's just impossible. This was filmed on the eastern part of the front lines the day before yesterday. And one more Russian gliding bomb was found this time on Ukrainian controlled territory. This is much bigger, the name of it is Grom and it was designed back in 2018. So it's the brand new weaponry for Russia and it's the first time they use it in the conflict before it was just on a test drops. 
and this is the construction of it you may see that it's very similar to the previous modification just longer and i think it may fly and cover more distance the scenario of the Russian collapse from the French ex-deputy commander of the NATO forces in Europe, Michael Yakovlev, and he said that NATO should be prepared for the possible Russian collapse in a nearby future, and Putin, with his actions, uh, made this scenario almost inevitable. And if you want me to speak about it on the next video, give me the thumb up my friends so press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job there are some of the links in the video description just below for you to do so thank you so much for your support and your help i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time